Hey traders, this is Tiffany with Tiffany Trades Options. I just wanted to make a check-in video on the IWM trade that I put on last week. Um, the market's been a little bit up and down over the last few days. Even a little bit last week it started to go up and then Monday and Tuesday it was going down. So right now our trade is still about where it was when we put it on. Um, I also wanted to let you guys know that I decided to deposit another $250 into this account because I think one of the key things about investing and smart investing is that you're consistently making deposits to grow your overall wealth. This includes growing your capital um, cash balance and then your buying power. And when you have more buying power, it provides you the opportunity to put on more trades. So this channel will probably be making um, small deposits every month or so, um, just so that we can show how small accounts will grow at a reasonable rate. We're not gonna try to drop in thousands of dollars at one time, unless I get a windfall, which would be nice, but probably not happening anytime soon. So with that said, I wanted to kind of go into what I think about when I decide to put on more than one options position. We have a little bit more buying power here. So I think now would be a good opportunity to take the time to explore a potential new trade. And I'm gonna look in the grid and I'm gonna check out the high options volume category. And um, one thing that I do when I open any trade is I um, try to stick with stocks that I'm familiar with and stocks that I wouldn't mind owning in my own portfolio. Um, this is typically the well-known companies that are in the S&P 500 or the Dow, companies that have been around for a long time and have a good track record and a well-known history of how they react in markets. I try to stay away from sectors that are currently taking a beating, for example, retail and REITs. I'm probably going to stay away from because I'm not really sure what their future looks like. It's possible that the COVID pandemic might result in some bankruptcies, and I don't really know what's going to happen in that space, so I'm going to stay away from that. But last week and this week is the start of the earnings season, and I know Bank of America already had their earnings, so I'm going to take a look at what that trade could look like here. Another thing that I keep in mind when I'm um, potentially opening positions is I always try to stick with options that have high options volume and Bank of America is one of those ideal candidates. This is the E-Trade um, options chain and you can see that even in the June 19th expiration there's a ton of open interest on both sides of the plays. We can even take a look at the, the larger chain. This means that Bank of America options plays are very liquid. The bids and the asks are very tight, which means getting in and out will probably be pretty easy. Yeah, so even in, even in the next week's expiration, there's still a lot of options activity and a lot of open interest. So this is an ideal candidate as well. Another thing to keep in mind when you're putting on your positions is whether earnings are coming up or if they've already happened. And in this case, Bank of America's earnings were last week. So their next earnings date isn't currently scheduled until sometime in July. This is not a fixed date. This is just an estimate based on um, past, past history. Uh, these dates will sometimes change as earnings get closer and companies announce when their actual earnings dates will be released. Another thing to worry about or pay attention to is um, whether or not the stock pays dividends. In this case, Bank of America does pay a dividend, but its most recent dividend has already been paid. And, and typically, dividends are paid on a quarterly basis. So the next time Bank of America is going to issue a dividend will probably be sometime at the end of June. So we're just going to keep an eye on that. Its dividend, its ex-dividend date will probably be early June, and then its payable date will be uh, in the at the end of June. So taking a look at the options expirations, the June 19th expiration is 58 days away, which is an ideal position within our 30 to 60 day window. Right now, Bank of America is trading at 2180. And if we were going to sell just a naked put in Bank of America at the 21 strike on June 19th, the total credit that we could collect is 184 or the equivalent of $184. In reviewing this trade though, we know that if we if we put this position on, it'll reduce our buying power by $356.65.
that's about half of the remaining buying power that's in the account right now, which is not great because you want to leave some room in case you need to manage your positions at a later time. And by manage at a later time, I mean if the positions move against you and you need to roll out um, and roll down for credit or even just widen the strikes a little bit, you just want to leave buying power as an option for you, buying power room as an option for you. Additionally, if we examine the profit loss probabilities, the max profit that we can make on this trade as a naked put would be $184. But if Bank of America traded against us and fell below the 21 strike, then the max loss is potentially $1,916, which would essentially be 21 minus 184. So instead of selling a naked put in this position, I'm going to go back to the defined risk strategy and I'm going to explore selling a credit spread, but just a little bit wider so that we can maintain a little bit more credit collected than we have in the past, while also still protecting ourselves in case the trade moves against us. So if we did a $3 wide credit spread, which would be 21 minus 18, the total credit collected would be about $100 is about one third of the width of the strike. If you wanted to ensure a greater probability of success, you can move the strikes down, but notice that you'll collect less credit. Looking at Bank of America's chart, we know that it is currently experiencing some lows compared to the last couple years. Examining it a little bit closer, Bank of America has been hanging around the 20 to looks like 24, 25 range. So I feel pretty comfortable selling a put credit spread at the 21 strike and the 18 strike. Reviewing the trade, we'll notice that the buying power reduction is almost cut in half to $205.29. That leaves us plenty of room to manage both the IWM trade and the Bank of America trade if we need to. The max profit on this trade would be $97. The max loss would be $203, which means it's the width of the strikes minus the credit collected, which is $203. If you're wondering why I stick mostly to put spreads, it's because I think that the market generally tends to trend upwards. We know that we've recently had the COVID pandemic financial scare and a lot of the market sold off, but I think most often, I think more often than not, people are generally interested in investing and, interest, and are bullish. So I don't really anticipate Bank of America going really any lower than this, but I don't really want to sell a call credit spread because it's possible that Bank of America might shoot up next week and we don't really know. So I prefer to sell put credit spreads because I wouldn't mind owning Bank of America if it was assigned to me. And then if that happened, then I could just sell a call against it and perform the wheel strategy, which if that does happen on this channel, I'd be happy to demonstrate that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and send this order. I'm going to go back real quick. All right, so the midpoint is now about 95. If we held on to this trade until expiration, the probability of profit is 57%. feel pretty comfortable with this, so I'm just going to go ahead and send. I'm going to go ahead and watch this trade for now. I need to push pause on the video recorder because I actually have to take a conference call for my day job, um, but I will certainly report back if this, this gets filled before the end of the day. All right, so we've been sitting on this trade for a little over half an hour now and it still hasn't been filled. It looks like the midpoint has been going down a little bit. Let's just check the bids and the asks. So earlier when I looked at this, the ask was 97 cents, the midpoint was 95 cents, and the bid was about 93, 94 cents. And now it's like the midpoint is 94. I'm just gonna go down only two cents and see what happens. Didn't get filled at 93 cents, so I'm gonna go down to 92 cents, which is only a $3 difference off of what our original trade setup was. It's not a huge deal. Oh, never mind. All right, so patience paid off. The trade was filled at 93 cents, which is only $2 difference from when we first started. So we'll take a look at the working order, which was shows a 93 cent fill. The history shows 
the fees associated with it. And now we have two positions in our portfolio. Bank of America is trading at 2181 right now. Our short strike is 21. The long strike is 18. This is a $3 wide strike. The expiration is 58 days away. IWM's expiration is 30 days away. So we're gonna take a we're gonna watch both of these trades over the next couple of weeks. And when I manage them, I will report back and let you guys know how they how they went. And as always, if you've made it this far, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Please, 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 if you like the content, like, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Send me an email. If you're looking for any trade ideas or trade strategies, I'd be so happy to help. And if it's not through one of my videos, I'd be happy to refer you to some free resources. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching, and I will be talking with you guys soon. Bye.